Hello. Beep, 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 and welcome to the Court of the EDI Jester. How are we, good people? Um, here we go. It continues on after the uh, announcements from the NHS, etc., etc., etc. Other things that we've seen. I've got an important article from the Tory Graph, which is in reference to the state of play in Wales. Now, we already know that Scotland's gone off a cliff um, and is desperately uh, in need of putting itself back together again. All the stuff with Humza Useless and that, uh, what's his name, the green bloke. Uh, Patrick pa uh, Patrick Harvey is it Patrick Harvey I don't know Nutter right so Harvey and then there's this other walking ginger general gender adult grievance gerbil okay, I forget his name funny little fella looks like Joe 90 on steroids right so Wales is becoming a safe haven for trans extremists I have a friend in Wales I've got more than one friend in Wales but I have a friend in Wales who's been a friend for a while we used to work together fantastic woman and um, I keep her, I try to keep her abreast of what's going on because she's got grandchildren. And obviously there are many people who are concerned about the effect on children. And Wales is in serious damn trouble. Welsh politicians must act now to implement the findings of the cash review and protect children from this dangerous ideology. For years, parents and teachers, clinicians, women's rights groups and others across the UK challenged quite reasonably. Well, not in my case. I scream and rant. But thankfully, reasonable people are in the right place. They're not talking to the... Can you imagine? Get me bad not getting up in the morning going, get me the jester. <laughs> Why? I want some incoherent babbling. Yep, he's just your man. <laughs> right? <coughs> so, I keep saying right again. Stop it. My nose is cold. Is your nose cold? What's that about age? In Wales and across the UK... Um, the assumptions behind diagnosis of gender dysphoria in the young and the evidence base for the treatment being prescribed are, to say the least, dodgy, right? We know that. OK, so. But uh, these women that spoke up and men that spoke up, people that spoke up, generally were met with a wall of silence in person and online. Parents and professionals alike were told their fears were baseless, bigoted and even hateful. <laughs> Really, the Welsh Government went further. Brushing aside any concerns, many Cardiff-based politicians eagerly approved embedding these principles in their official plans, policies and even the school curriculum. This is where we're at in Wales. What's going on? NHS England did commission Hilary Cass to review the medical treatment of gender-questioning children in England and Wales. Her final report has been published and now policymakers in Wales must face its findings and stark conclusions. From 2014, that's about the time that Stonewall went rogue, isn't it? From 2014, puberty blocking drugs moved from a research only protocol to being available in routine clinical practice. Despite a large body of evidence to suggest there was a lack of any positive measurable outcomes when used, this adoption of a treatment with uncertain benefits without further scrutiny was also found to have played a role in increasing the demand among patients for treatment. So it's, they're saying here 2014 was D-Day. Now you and I know, right, that this has been going on a lot longer than that. If you look at what the feminists had to say in the 70s and 80s, Janice Raymond and the transsexual, the transsexual empire, I think Janice Raymond wrote. And um, uh, continuing cultural influences and cultural clues that something was wrong, dressed to kill by De Palma, shortly after John Hopkins stopped doing this, this Frankenstein experiment stuff. But yet here we are again. And it was allowed, it has been allowed, and the Welsh Government aren't going to let this go, are they? They've got the bit between their teeth, it's in the schools, it's everywhere. Is that Drakeford bloke gone yet? So, the response to some clinicians was to prescribe an irreversible path of puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones and even surgery. And from me, not from the article, mostly on gays and lesbians, autistic ADHD kids. So we know what's going on here. Instead of asking their, their own questions, healthcare professionals propagated a dangerous political ideology. In the absence of evidence and at the cost of safeguarding, teachers also have made ill-advised and premature decisions about social transitioning. The NHS, right, is, de I think it's devolved health policy, so Scotland and Wales can do what they like, right? But this important linchpin that Cass has, has addressed, this important and vital to all of us, Lynch, in the NHS is obviously very important to us as we get older, very important to us if something happens to us when we're younger or if we're in need of care. Uh, this is the first 
I think, solver, which will probably, probably, end with being paused at some point. It will stop any action to stop any of this, right? this crap will pause when we get a Labour government. Now, I don't know what's going to happen at that point, but I imagine that there's going to be a second wave of this some four years from now when the public has fully woken up to what's been happening, where we'll get another Tory government and they'll begin the process of eradication of gender identity, ideology and queer theory once again. That is my hope, because I do not see currently any sign that Labour is going to wake up to what they've done. And certainly no sign that the unions are going to wake up to what they've done. But bearing in mind the power of the unions over the so-called Labour Party. So I wonder when I look around and I see people saying, oh, Labour's getting it right. Labour are not getting it right. OK. And I understand that there are many, many left leaning people who hope that Labour will get it right. They won't. All right, we can't change this horse mid track and it looks like we're going to be forced to. Because Labour are going to get in. That's my big worry, is Labour are going to get in. We'll see, won't we? But what will happen next is, now that we've dealt with the NHS, I would expect to see very quick, a very swift movement in education. Although the time frame left for the Tories to do something is now shrinking. And that's not the word. Dwindling. That's a better word. Dwindling at a rate of knots. And how we can be sure of where that's going to take us, I've no idea. But if I was the Tory party, I would call for a national investigation covering not just education, but also the police, the judiciary, the NHS. And that particular inquiry should be started as soon as possible or close to the election date so they can leave it with Labour to deal with. That's what I'd do. Scupper Labour on that front. Uh, ensure that the purpose of the inquiry is made very clear. That the boundaries in which the inquiry will work is very clear it's the same as on a grand scale as some of the warrior teachers who are taking on schools you know they find themselves with this bizarre situation where the headmaster's actively saying no no we, we support the medicalization and gay conversion therapy that is being pushed it's absolutely insane so that leads to, you know what the parents would do in terms of defining their terms which they do very well the warrior teacher parents is to magnify that and that would become how we would carry out an investigation across the board which is gender identity doesn't exist it's only personality gender expression is fashion the whole thing is rooted in the wants and needs of cross-dressing and paraphilic and fetishistic men the children have simply been caught up in it and that the belief system that's pushed um, gay organizations to become uh, lgbt organizations means that each one of those in the charity sector is probably going to have to close it's the only thing we can do with them now they're completely damaged beyond belief so I'm going to be interested to see where this takes us. Very interested to see where this takes us. But particularly interested to watch what Wales does next. Because they have embedded it. Go read the article. They've embedded it right across the board. Right across the board. In, in schools, in everything. How, I, I don't know why. Does Drakeford, who was pushing all this rubbish, does he have a trans child? Trans child, or a child he thinks is trans. Or is he a, himself a cross-dressing gusset fumbler, maybe? Who knows? Or he has regard for cross-dressing gusset fumblers. The public must know. So go and read this about Wales because they're in real trouble. And I know there's been a brilliant report done by a group of Welsh people about the education system that is already in, in the milieu, so to speak. I hope for the best for both Wales and Scotland. But at the moment, I don't feel particularly um, excited about where it's going. But I desperately, desperately want to be proved wrong by that hour. OK, so have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye bye.